<laughs> Blue Coal presents one of radio's most famous features, The Shadow. The story of the mystery man who strikes terror into the very heart of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today we present The Shadow in one of his most remarkable adventures. A modern mystery of science and crime, The Phantom Voice. In just a moment, the shadow begins his exciting adventure. Meanwhile, I'd like to tell you how you can safeguard the health and comfort of your family during these dangerous winter months. Burn blue coal. It gives you safe, uniform, healthful heat all winter long. And for valuable heating information that will save you real money regardless of the fuel you're using, then tonight for John Barclay's free 24-page book, How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home. Address a postcard to Blue Coal, 120 Broadway, New York City, or to Blue Coal in care of this station. Don't miss out by delaying. Then for your free copy of How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home, right at the close of this program. Here we are. Here we are, Margot. Let me help you on. All right. Thank you, Lamont. This way, Margot. Lamont Cranston, where on earth are you taking We're me? We're on our way to the criminal court, Margot. The criminal court? Oh, a murder trial. Mm, this isn't a murder trial. But unless I'm badly mistaken, we're going to witness an assassination. What? An assassination. The assassination of the character and reputation of one of the most outstanding public men in America today. Oh, you mean Senator Durham? Yes. Say, I've been reading about his trial in the papers. They've certainly unearthed plenty of evidence that he accepted that bribe. Well, unless I've made a mistake in character analysis, that evidence is forged. Durham is more than a political figure, Margot. He's a statesman. He has an independent income. He's devoted his life to unselfish public service. Oh, he's a very wealthy man. Yes, Margot. Senator Durham has given away ten times the amount of money he's accused of taking as a bribe. Well, if that's true, Lamont, the whole thing doesn't make sense. Why should a man like that take a 15-year prison term for taking a bribe he didn't need? That's the point that worries me. Incidentally, didn't I see that the prosecution expect a spring of surprise bit of evidence today? Exactly. That's why we're here. Come along, Margot. Court's already in session. <laughs> such outburst on the part of the spectators at this trial, and I shall order the courtroom cleared. Proceed, Mr. Defense Attorney. Your Honor, I have stated the case for my client. I have shown that by his record, it would have been impossible for him to act as the prosecution claims he has acted. And I have yet to see any proof that Senator Durham has committed any crime. I will now call Senator Durham himself to the stand to deny these lies in person. Senator Durham to the stand. Here I am. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir, of your God? I do. Proceed with the examination. Senator, you have heard the prosecution's accusations that you did at some time during last December accept a bribe from the late Mario Rinaldi. Yes. What is your answer? I never accepted a bribe from anyone. My answer is that the whole thing is a pack of lies. Order! Order in the court. Your witness, Senator Durham. Do you deny that on the 16th of December last, you received a visit from the late Mario Rinaldi in your room at the Maximilian Hotel? Why, no. He came to see me and Confine I told... Confine yourself to specific answers. Gentlemen of the jury, the defense has made much of the senator's long and seemingly illustrious career of public service. They would have you believe that, like Caesar's wife, the defendant, Senator Durham, is above suspicion. They've paraded witnesses to the stand who've told you of his philanthropies, 
of his unselfish devotion to public service, <coughs> of his blameless personal life in the past. That we do not contest, refute, nor deny. But unfortunately for Senator Durham, he is not being tried for his past. We, the prosecution, need but one more bit of evidence to complete our case. We have that evidence. Order. Order in the court. I beg leave to show the jury a soundtrack motion picture of a meeting between the defendant and the late Mario Rinaldi, whose bribe of $50,000 paid to the defendant is the basis upon which this case was brought to trial. Well, the court. Has this motion picture a direct bearing on this case, Mr. Prosecutor? It has, Your Honor. Has the counsel for the defense any objection to the introduction of this type of evidence without due notice? Senator Durham has nothing whatever to fear from the introduction of any authentic motion picture record of any meeting of Mario Rinaldi and himself, even though the picture was made without the senator's knowledge. Very well. The projection equipment is in the courtroom. Will you order the shades drawn and the lights extinguished? Court attendants will please draw the shades. Again, I caution the spectators against any outbursts of any kind. Furthermore, no one will be allowed to leave the court until the introduction of this evidence is complete. You may proceed, Mr. Prosecutor. With the court's permission, we will place the screen in full view of the jury. Your Honor. Counsel for the defense has a question. For the sake of the record, Will the prosecution state at whose request this motion picture was made? It was made at the request of Anthony Vogel, an attorney of this city. For what reason? As a citizen interested in public welfare. Very well. Now, if the attendant will turn out the lights. Certainly, Your Honor. Order. Silence in the court. The prosecution will submit affidavits to prove that this is an authentic film record of a meeting between Senator Durham and Mario Rinaldi on the evening of December 16th. You may turn on the machine. Yes, sir. Yes, come in. Oh, hello, Rinaldi. I've been expecting you. Look here, Senator Durham. Why haven't I got the contract award on that Baxter Street building? The money's been appropriated. You said you'd use your influence if we fixed you up. Of course. Of course, Rinaldi, I told you you'd get that contract for a consideration. But you didn't send me my present of 50000 for swinging it your way. So naturally, I... Oh, so that's it. Do you want to be paid off first, huh? Yes. And in cash. No checks. Okay. You'll get your 50 grand. Get me that contract. I'll be back in an hour with your money. Order. Order. Order in the court. Order! Order in the court! That's the end of the film, gentlemen. It's a lie! A lie, I tell you, I never said that! Order! Order in the court! Your Honor, I object. My client never had such a conversation with Mario Rinaldi. That picture is a fake! One moment. Attendants will please turn on the light. Your Honor, allow me to remind the counsel for the defense that pictures do not lie. Your Honor, we do not deny that the meeting between Senator Durham and Mario Rinaldi did take place in the manner shown in this film, but we deny that any such conversation took place. Have you any proof of that? There are only two people who could know what went on in that room, Senator Durham and Rinaldi, and Rinaldi is dead. Do you deny the voice was the voice of the defendant? My client admits that it sounds like his voice, but it cannot be, since he never asked or received a bribe from the late Mario Rinaldi for any reason or purpose whatever. Your Honor, I ask a recess of this trial in order that the defense may have an opportunity to study this film and soundtrack. I object! I do not see how the due process of law will be impaired by a 24-hour delay. Objection overruled. Courts adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> Lamont, after seeing that talking picture of Senator Durham re meeting Rinaldi and practically demanding a bribe, how can you, how can anyone doubt his... Margot, death? the Greeks had a philosophy that ran something like this. Only believe half that which you see and 
Nothing you hear. Oh, but Lamont, that wasn't hearsay evidence. That was the senator speaking. That was his voice. Even he couldn't deny it. No man knows the sound of his own voice, Margot. Besides, Durham never spoke those words to Rinaldi. But you saw him. You saw the motion picture. Exactly. Because I did see him speak, I know he didn't say the things that were on the soundtrack of that film. What do you mean, Lamont? Have you ever watched the movement of a man's jaw muscles when he speaks certain words? You mean you know what he really said? No. No, his face was half averted from the camera. I couldn't see his lips. I don't know just what he did say, but I know he didn't utter the words we just heard. Oh, but Lamont, it was still the senator's voice saying those other things, demanding that bribe. I, I'd swear to you. Yes, it. and so will the jury, Margot. Unless something is done within the next 24 hours, one of the finest men in this country, an innocent man, Senator Durham, is going to be railroaded into prison for 15 years by his political enemies. I'm stopping here, Margot. I uh, want you to wait in the car, please. No. The lawyer's building. What are you going to do here, Lamont? I'm going up to the 25th floor, Margot. The shadow has an appointment with one of the most crooked lawyers in this city. Anthony Vogel was so interested in the public welfare that he went to the trouble of having a sound camera planted in Senator Durham's hotel suite the night of... December 16th. While we are waiting for the shadow to return, I would like to ask all homeowners a question. Do you want to save money? Of course you do. And you begin real saving when you cut down on the cost of heating your home. Here's the easiest and surest way to do this. Decide now to cook and heat with blue coal. Here's why blue coal is more economical. It is prepared especially for use in the home. And blue coal is Pennsylvania anthracite, the fuel that furnaces, cooking ranges, and parlor stoves in this section of the country were especially designed to burn. It is mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company, the world's largest producer of specially prepared home fuel. And every carload of blue coal is laboratory tested for purity and size before shipment. And you can always be sure of getting this superior home fuel because it is tinted with an unmistakable blue color so that you can easily identify it at a glance. In Waverly, New York, and vicinity, blue coal sales so far this winter are 27% ahead of sales for the same period a year ago. This increase in sales is because Waverly families have found out that blue coal does all I say it will do. So I urge all families throughout this region to try blue coal. Order a trial ton tomorrow. Ask for blue coal by name in any one of four sizes. Egg, stove, chestnut, or pea. You will find the name of your nearest blue coal dealer listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Well, Mr. Vogel, you certainly put it over. That sound picture sure turned the trick. Yes, but I'm still worried, Travis. Well, there ain't nothing to be worried about. Senator Durham's as good as on his way to the pen right now. Well, I won't feel happy until he is. When are you going to get me a wrestling bout, boss? A wrestling bout? Yeah, it's about time I was getting in the ring again. And, well, I could stand the extra dough. Forget you're a wrestler, Travis. You'll make more money in this racket as my bodyguard. Any calls while I was down at court? Yeah, Wilson phoned a couple of minutes ago. Why didn't you say so? Well, you didn't ask me. What did he want? I wanted to talk to you. Hey, what do you suppose he wants? Dough? I've paid him all he's going to get. Say, maybe he's read in the afternoon papers what we're really using that soundtrack for. If he gets white-livered and talks... Well, maybe we should fix him so he can't talk, huh, boss? What do you mean? Well, he could fall out of that 15-story apartment of his, accidental-like. He'd only have to fall once. It um... might be a good plan. Okay, you want me to go over there now and take care of it, boss? No. No, there's no sense doing anything about him until we have to. But the first sign of anybody getting wise to what we're doing, 
Then we'll arrange a neat little accident for friend Wilson. Well, now, Benton, now let's take a look at that Wesley murder case. <laughs> One case at a time, Mr. Vogel. What, what was that? Suppose we review the evidence of the case against Senator Durham. What, what sort of devil's trick is this? Who are you? I am the shadow, Vogel. But I, I can't see you. Nevertheless, Vogel, I am here in the shadows. Gee, what? Somebody's talking and nobody's here. Get up, Travis. I'll handle this. Oh. So you're the shadow, eh? You come here to play your hypnotic tricks on me. What do you know about Senator Durham's business? I know everything about it. I've been listening to your interesting conversation about this Mr. Wilson. He seems to play an important part in your case against Senator Durham. Listen, Shadow, I've heard plenty about you. I don't want to fight you. How much do you want to keep out of this? Always the fixer. How much, Shadow? There isn't enough money in the world to cover up what you're trying to do, Vogel. Who is this man? Wilson. What part did he play in this scheme of yours? Oh, so you don't know. You're just trying to find out, are you, Shadow? Travis, lock the door. Okay, boy. That's locked. Melodrama won't help you, Vogel. Boy, if I could only see this guy, I could... Come on, Travis. We don't need to see him. Well, what do you mean, Come boy? over here. Give me your hand. Well, okay, but it don't make much sense. You'll see. All right. Stand up with me against this wall. Now, stretch out your arms. Can you touch the side wall on that side? Yeah, I can touch it. Good. I can touch it on my side. Now... Walk slowly to the other end of the room and don't let your fingers leave the wall. Oh, I get it. Then the shadow can't get past us. Yeah, huh? You're quick. Now, walk forward slowly. Slow, you fool. Okay. Well, I... I don't feel nothing. We're almost to the end of the room, boss. Maybe he got away. No, no, he, he couldn't go through the door. It's locked. The window is locked, too. Hey... Boss, I felt something. Huh? I got him. I got hold of him, boss. Uh, I can't see him, but I got him. I got the shadow around the throat. He's a man after all. Gee, strong. Would kill him, Travers. Maybe. Maybe he can. He's choking me. G give me your gat, boss. I'll shoot him. You don't need a gun. It'll make too much noise. He's weakening, boss. Kill him, Travers. Give him your famous stranglehold. If he doesn't let go, he'll kill me. Yes, yes, Shadow. This is where you die. Finish him off, Travers. I've got to hurry and take care of Wilson before he gets a chance to talk. trying to get hold of me earlier this evening. Yes, that's that's right. I uh, want to talk to you. Won't you come in? Are you alone? Oh, yes. Good. Uh, Mr. Vogel, when you asked me to do some work for you, I I didn't ask to know what you were going to do with it. I needed the money for my wife, Alice, and kids, and I... You got paid, didn't you? Yes, but... I mean... Well, all this stuff in the papers, Mr. Vogel, about the... Frankly, I, I don't like it. Oh, you don't? Having a little attack of conscience, Wilson? Well, doing a job is one thing, but sending a man away to prison on a false charge is, is something else. So I, I intended to tell you that... Tell me what? Well, to tell you that I refuse to let it go on any further. Oh, you refuse? Yes. After all, Mr. Vogel, if I tell what I know about... Well, what are you going to do about it? Just this. Don't move, Wilson. Put that gun down. Don't be a fool, Vogel. I'm not the fool, Wilson. Now, turn your back to me. That's right. What are you going to do? I'm going to assist at a little accident. Now, walk to that window. Wait. You can't do this to me. You can't. Walk. Okay. Now, open the window. All right, Wilson. Climb up on the windowsill. Just a moment, Mr. Vogel. The shadow. I, I thought Travis took care of you. You thought Travis? 
Travers took care of me, did you, Bogo? Well, I admit he's a good wrestler. But there was one little hole, Vogel, I learned in the Orient. But he didn't know. He had me beaten for a moment. It was my one chance to get you to lead me to Wilson. You mean you followed me here? Yes. Yes, I followed you here. It wasn't very difficult to get away from Mr. Travers. It seems... I arrived just in time for my proof. In time? No. Oh. There, Shadow, there's your proof lying dead on the floor. <laughs> You're crazy, Vogel. You're a fool. You'll get the chair for this. I'm not as crazy as you think. <laughs> so I'm a fool, am I, Shadow? Now, you're the fool for coming here. You're the fool the police will find locked in this room with Wilson's dead body. They'll find you. I'll see that they do. And here's the gun you killed him with. <laughs> Why don't you try the window, Shadow? It's only 15 stories to the floor. <laughs> Shadow. Shadow. Wilson. Wilson. Tell me. Quick. I am. I'm done for. Quick. Oh. Quick, Wilson, give me the proof. The proof, Wilson. Mm. Proof. The proof that you framed Senator Durham. Senator. Proof. Senator Durham. Come on, Wilson, come mm. on. Tell me, how did you frame Senator Durham? Durham. Alice, darling. Alice, darling. My baby. Wilson. <coughs> Wilson! Lamont! Lamont, are you all right? Unlock the door, Margot. Lock the door. The key's on the outside. Oh, Lamont, I, I heard a shot and saw Vogel running out, so I couldn't wait. What happened? I hadn't been so stupid. Waited so long. But I, I wanted to find out their secret before I spoke. And now... Now it's too late. Wilson is unconscious, I'm afraid. He's dying. Vogel has outwitted me. After all... That's it, Vogel. Shot me. In cold blood, he shot me. A burn for it. Wilson. Wilson. Wilson, listen to me. Listen and think. Think. Tell me. How did you frame Senator Durham? Tell me that, Wilson. Tell me that, and I'll see that Vogel pays for doing this to you. Senator Durham, now I remember. I'll show you. Help me into the next room. I'll show you. We'll help you. Easy now. No. Easy. I'll get on the other side. Why, look. It's a recording studio. Yeah, that's right. It's my hobby. I'm an actor. An impersonator by profession. An, an impersonator? Yes. Yeah. Help me with that chair by the turntable. I impersonate people. I've imitated Senator Durham's voice dozens of times. I... <coughs> Quick. Hand me the microphone. Turn on the switch. There. I can't hold out much longer. Here's the microphone. Drop that needle on the wax record. Turn the switch. This is you, Wilson, speaking. I've just been shot by Anthony Vogel. He hired me to... On this record, found in the apartment of the late Hugh Wilson, the radio and stage impersonator who was found shot in his apartment last night. I ask the court's permission to play it at this time. Permission granted. You may start the record now. Yes, sir. This is Hugh Wilson speaking. I've just been shot by Anthony Vogel. He hired me to impersonate the voice of Senator Durham. It's my voice on the soundtrack of the picture shown at Senator Durham's trial. I, I'll show how I did it. Listen. Of course. Of course, Rinaldi, I told you you'd get the contract for a consideration. But you didn't send me my present of $50,000 for swinging it your way. So naturally, that, that's how it was done. That's how I did it. Durham Dennison. You never heard those words. I did it. I... Order. Order in the court. What? This is 
is amazing, incredible. Your Honor, there is one more voice on the record at the end. Listen. The voice you have heard is that of Hugh Wilson, murdered by Anthony Vogel. He is the man who sought to frame Senator Durr. But Vogel failed. Just as in the end, all crime must fail. And all criminals pay the penalty of death. Order! Order in the court! Whose voice was that? That, Your Honor, is the voice of the man to whom Senator Durham owes his vindication. The voice of the shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, before the shadow leaves you, here's John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Good evening, friends. Just now, I'd like to offer you a friendly suggestion to lose no time in sending for your free copy of my book, How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home. This little book is attractively illustrated, and each of its 24 pages holds valuable heating information that is of interest to every homeowner. Problems such as the importance of clean furnaces, putting coal on the fire, how to bank a fire, and how to light a fire, are dealt with in the fullest detail. For example, on page 16, you will find steps to follow in getting the best results from your furnace in the morning, during the day, and at night. And friends, these are only a few of the 36 topics covered in my book. There is no charge for this book. It will be sent to your home absolutely free and postpaid. It is a part of Blue Coal's famous free service. So I earnestly recommend that you send a postcard tonight for your free copy of How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home. Address Blue Coal, 120 Broadway, New York City, or to Blue Coal in care of the station to which you are listening. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. Friends, these books are going like wildfire. So write for your copy tonight. Address a postcard in a clear, legible hand to Blue Coal, 120 Broadway, New York City, or to Blue Coal in care of the station to which you are listening. Right now for your copy of How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> As you sow evil, so shall you reap evil. Crime does not pay. A shadow knows. <laughs> America's finest anthracite will again present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen, and be sure to burn blue coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort.
<laughs> now again comes radio's strangest adventurer, The Shadow. Mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today on the air, Blue Coal brings you the Shadow's latest adventure, Hounds in the Hills. In just a moment, the Shadow's exciting adventure will begin. Meanwhile, I have an important message for everybody. We are now in the midst of the most treacherous season of the entire year. But you can protect your family's health during this danger period by burning Blue Coal. For blue coal gives you clean, uniform, healthful heat all winter long. And its harmless blue coloring is your guarantee of better heat at less cost. So when you order fuel, insist on blue coal. It's Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. Your nearest blue coal dealer will be glad to send you a trial ton. Phone him tomorrow. <laughs> High in the pine-clad hills of North Carolina, where backwoods living is neighbor to palatial winter homes, there is a haunted mansion, relic of former grandeur. With no visible means of support, old Sadie, haggard, half-demented creature, and Jake, her hunchback son, live in one wing of the dilapidated old house. A pack of great, vicious, cross-breed hounds guards the old place from intruders. It is early evening. In the dim half-light, Two figures, led by one of the hounds, approach the house. I don't like it here. I want to go home. What's the matter, little boy? You ain't afraid of my pet dog, are you? Yes, I am. I'm afraid of your dog, and I'm afraid of you, too. Uh, I want to go home to my mother. I don't want to go with you. Uh, I take my dog wherever I go. He won't hurt you. Not so long as you're with me, you won't. <laughs> I no tell him what he'd do to you if he got you alone, Jakey. My name isn't Jakey. My name is Dickie Nelson. Mm -hmm. And if you don't let me go home, my mother will be worried. Now, now, Jakey, don't be scared, old Sadie. I'm your mother. Ah, old Sadie's your mother. <laughs> I didn't know that, did you? You're not my mother. And I don't believe there's other little boys here like you said. <laughs> no, no. You wait, Jakey. I'm I don't like him. He's awful looking. <laughs> Jakey? Uh, he's a hunchback. Uh, his mother dropped him when he was a little fella like you. I dropped him. <laughs> uh, we'll start all over again with a new Jakey. Uh, no, no, I won't drop you. You won't be a hunchback like he is. I want to go home to my mother and daddy. I don't like anything here. Leave me alone. Don't touch me. Don't you touch me. Mom, you crazy old fool. You done it again. <laughs> Lamont, your golf's improving. So, Cranston, you don't always miss the ball, eh? Well, that's what a vacation in North Carolina does for you. Especially when you're the host, Mr. Rupert. <laughs> I thought you were always on vacations, Lamont. I've never heard of you doing anything except dabbling in that mysterious laboratory of yours. Yes, yeah, just a playboy. <laughs> yes, I just dabble. A little science, a little chemistry, a little psychology. I just dabble. Mr. <laughs> Rupert! <laughs> Someone's calling you, Gary. He's been in a hurry. Well, it's the sheriff. I hope I haven't done anything wrong. Perhaps he saw you drive, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rupert. Yeah? Uh, sorry to bother you. Uh, what is it, Sheriff? Another child's lost. Gone over the cliff at the border trail. What? Another one? Yes, a little Dickie Nelson this time. Oh, good Lord, Sheriff. This is horrible. Child lost? Is, is that what you said, Sheriff? Yes, sir. A fourth in less than two weeks. Lost? Lost how? On the border trail over the cliff there. Oh, that's awful. Well, what is this trail, Gary? Well, it's a narrow pathway along the rim of a high cliff. It washes out so that a slip on the gravel starts to slide right over the cliff. And you mean to say four boys have been lost there in 
two weeks. Yes. Four? Yes, but doesn't it strike you there might be something more than just fate causing the disappearance of these children? Well, but what? That I don't know. Gary, I'd like to look at this cliff. Hey, look, uh, Mr. Transom. You see how the trail washes out down the cliff? Yes, Sheriff. That's a thousand feet straight down there. It's the river at the bottom. Yeah. I reckon the current must carry the bodies away. We haven't found a trace of them. I don't mm. suppose there's any doubt about what happened to the boys. No, Miss Lane. When Bobby Mina disappeared last week, we found a ball he'd been playing with. Would you call that conclusive evidence? Well, this morning we snared up Dickie Nelson's cap that was caught on some shrubbery part way down the mountain. Mm. Of course, some of the colored folk around here think ghosts done it. Ghosts? Yeah. See, they were howling last night about the time Dickie was lost here. What kind of howling, Sheriff? Down to find no sir. They say they heard it the three times the other boys were lost. But you know how they are. Colored folks up here in the hills is superstitious. Yes. But what kind of a howl does a ghost make in this part of the country, Sheriff? And that's what I asked. About near they could describe it, it was like a dog howling. A hound dog. Well, I've generally found that a dog howling means a dog. Perhaps I'd better reverse the usual procedure, the dog trailing a man. This is all very mysterious, Lamont. Yes, it is, Margot. Would you excuse me for a moment, Sheriff? Yes, certainly, Mr. Crank. Margot, I think the shadow will look into this mystery. But how? Go back to the house, Margot. I'll wireless you if I need help. In my invisible state as the shadow, I'm going to follow the clue of the dogs. Let's see where it leads me. I want to go home. Don't cry, Dickie. Don't cry. Huh? What's that? Who are you? I've come here to help you. You're Dickie Nelson, aren't you? Yes, sir, but who are you? so dark I can't see you. You don't need to see me, Dickie. Pretend I'm just a shadow. But you can hear me. Yes, sir, but I want to go home. Here, here, you've got to be a man, Dickie. I'll try to get you home. But you've got to stop crying and help me. I'm scared, that's why. Haven't you got a handkerchief? No, sir. Here, use my handkerchief. Thank you. Now dry your eyes and wipe your nose. I want you to tell me something. Yes, sir. Are there any other boys here? Yes, sir, three of them. How did you get here? I believed a ghost story, Dickie. And I looked for a ghost who howled like a hound. And then I just walked. But I didn't find a ghost. I found what I expected to find. A dog. In fact, lots of them. Didn't they see you? No. Didn't old Sadie or Jake see you? No, it's dark in here. But even with the light on, people can't see me because I've learned how to make them think they don't see me. I blind their eyes to me. How? Never mind how. You must believe it and don't be afraid of me. I'm your friend. Yes, sir. Trust me, Dickie. Perhaps I can find a way to get you and the other boys out of... Quiet. Somebody coming. If the sheriff well, finds these kids here, they'll hang us, you crazy old fool. Hey, now don't you touch my baby. He's my Jakey. Uh, he's you before you came a hunchback. If you kill him, you'll be killing yourself. He's you, Jake. You keep away from me. Don't you touch me. Jake, don't touch that boy. Who's that? I hear it too. Give me that lamp. I hear it too, Jake. Uh, nobody's in here but us. Us and the kid. He got out. No, I'm still here. Mr. Boyce, mm. ain't nobody with us. I heard it too. Well, that's nothing, Jake. I'm always hearing voices. <laughs> and now you're hearing them. Now we're both crazy. <laughs> uh, reckon I ain't so crazy a voice can scare me. If I'm crazy like you, then voices ain't real. Now put this kid out of the way no. and then I'll get the others. No, no stop. Please don't hit me with that stick. No, 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 Jake. Put down that stick, Jake. Put it down. Now. I ain't scared of voices that ain't real. I said drop it. Uh, Who hit me? Look. 
Look at that place on my wrist. Look. <laughs> well, Jake, I've been hearing voices for a long time, but I ain't never been hit by one. You done it. Oh, I did not. I wasn't near you. Then it was the kid. I never moved. Well, then who? I hit you, Jake. Now I'm going to give you a chance to save yourselves. Let this boy go. Bring the other boys here. I'll take them home. No. No, they're mine. They're mine. They're Dickie. No. I'll get rid of them my way. Please help me. I want to go home. Trust me, Dickie. There's only one thing for me to do now. Jake, this is your last chance. What? Who's that? Uh, you reckon it's somebody looking for the kids? Heaven it is. Jake, it must be them. The Duke and Slim coming to hide out. Ah, uh, listen. Yeah. It's him. Oh, Jake, he'll kill us both. He knows about my babies. Well, what he don't know won't hurt him. Shut the door to the kids' room and lock it. Yeah, hurry up, Jake. Let him in. But don't say a word about my babies. Don't worry. Yeah. Maybe I'm crazy, too, but I ain't that crazy. Well, what took you so long, Jake? Hello, Duke. Come in, Slim. Hurry up. Shut the door. Okay, Duke. Hey, what a dump this is. It's better than being in jail up north. If we didn't have this hideout, that's where you'd be. Oh, hello, old Sadie. <laughs> Come in, Duke. <laughs> Cops after you again. <laughs> Shut up. That half-witted old dame talks too much. Hey, are you staying for a while, Duke? What's it to you? I don't care. Oh, lay off the guy, Slim. Jake, and you too, old Sadie. Yeah? We're taking a little rest away from the cops, see? Turn the dogs loose in the yard around the house so they can chew up anybody that comes here looking for us. Go on, Jake, do it now. All right, Duke. Just a minute, Jake. Who's that? Somebody's in here, Duke. <laughs> it's the voice again, Jake. <laughs> they can't hear it unless they're crazy, too. <laughs> that voice again. <laughs> yes, Jake, that same voice. And the Duke can hear it, too. Can't you, Duke? Say, what's going on here? Who is that? I tell you, it's in here, Duke. Who's playing tricks on Duke, me? Duke, did you ever hear of the shadow? The shadow? I have, Duke. I know, that's the guy that talks to you, but you can't see him. Shut up, you fool. Yeah, Shadow. I've heard about you. I never believed what I heard, though. You can believe it now. Listen, Duke. I'm here for only one purpose. To save the lives of four little children. Oh, don't believe him. It's a lie. Shut up. I'm handling this. Go ahead, Shadow. Go ahead. Talk some more. All right. Old Sadie and Jake there put you in a tough spot. How, Shadow? Old Sadie is crazy. She's, well, shall we say, borrowed four little boys from places near here and made it appear that they were killed. Killed, falling over a cliff. It's a lie. They was killed. I killed them and my Jakey took their place. Duke, the old dame is back. Shut up. Jake here is almost as crazy as his mother, but... He wants to kill the boys. Uh, don't believe him, Duke. Either way, you'll be arrested for kidnapping. Hey, Duke, we don't want no part in kidnapping. Well, Shadow, what's the proposition? If you let me take the boys away back to their homes, you won't be accused of kidnapping. And give you a chance to tip off the police to where we're hiding out? <laughs> oh, no. Let him have it, Slim. Hey, look, Duke, the door. He went out the door. He's gone, Duke. He's gone. We can't get him now. Oh, yes, we can. How? Ah, uh, the dog. <laughs> If the shadow's a man, them dogs can follow his scent. <laughs> if the shadow is a man, you mean the dogs will trail him by his scent, even though we can't see him? She's right, Duke. But we haven't got anything to give the dogs the smell to give them the scent. <laughs> Maybe he left something in the kid's room. Let's go and see. Yeah, come on, let's, let's see. Let's see what I get the kid in there. Why not? <laughs> Yeah, let's let's look around here. Ah, he's too clever to have left anything behind. Hey, where'd the boy get that handkerchief he's sniffling in the... Handkerchief, huh? Yeah, he never had no handkerchief when he come here. Uh, who gave you this handkerchief, little boy? A man. What man? A man who spoke to me in the dark. You couldn't see him? No, he said I had to believe he was here, although I couldn't see him. <laughs> then it's the shadows, Get the dogs. Get the dogs. They can get his scent from that handkerchief and trail him. The shadow can't escape this time. The Shadow's Adventure continues in just a moment. Meanwhile, I'd like to say a few words about a subject that's uppermost in everyone's mind these days, how to save money. Large savings in cooking and heating costs can be made by switching to blue coal. For blue coal is the perfect home fuel. It is the best grade of Pennsylvania anthracite. And anthracite is the fuel that furnaces, cooking stoves, and parlor heaters in New England were designed to use. 
Blue coal gives off a steady, clean heat. It lasts longer and burns down to a fine powdery ash without giving off smoke or grime common to many other fuels. Blue coal's cleanliness will appeal to New England housewives. For housekeeping is greatly simplified when blue coal is used because with this dependable fuel, you not only have a more comfortable home, but a cleaner house inside and out. These are the reasons why blue coal is so popular in Portucket, Rhode Island. Sales in Portucket this winter are 12% ahead of sales for the same period a year ago. Here's another point. You buy American when buying blue coal. It is mined and prepared in Pennsylvania by the Glen Alden Coal Company, especially for home use. So for economy and cleanliness, start using blue coal tomorrow. Order it by name. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer. You'll find him listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Try to hide behind the trees if you think you can sneak back to the house. All right, Duke, all right. Slim. Yeah, Duke? If Jake starts falling back any, again anymore, trying to lose us among the trees in the dark so he can go back to the house and finish off them kids, let him have it. Okay, boss. I wasn't. Honest, I wasn't. Okay. Then come on. Hey, you, Jake. Ain't those dogs liable to turn on us? Yeah, if you was alone. Yeah, but I'm with you. <laughs> you hear that, Duke? The dogs have got the shadow. Uh, it's lucky for us he left his handkerchief with the kids so the hounds could get the scent, ain't it, huh? Yeah. Now, there's only one or two things for the shadow to do. Stand and be chewed by them beasts, or else climb a tree. He's not invisible to a dog's nose. They can smell him. If he's climbed a tree, we got him, Duke. Hey, there's the dogs jumping around that tree. Right there. See him? Well, what do we do now? Well, we can't do much while it's dark. What do you mean? I mean, we got to keep the shadow treed until it's daylight. Yeah, but you can't see him, whether it's light or dark. That's right. Maybe he's beating us after all. Listen, if we wait till daylight, then we can see where he is in the tree. But you can't see where he is. Yeah, but when he comes, he has to shake the branch he's sitting on. And when we see any of them leaves shaking, we'll shoot right at that place. It'll be like shooting at nothing. I know. Hey, if we don't get him that way... He has two other things to choose from. Yeah, what's that? We can keep him treed until he gets so weak he can't work his invisibility gag anymore. And he comes down. And then the dogs get him. Well, there's nothing to do but wait till morning then. No, but we got to keep awake. Morning ain't far off. And then we'll see. <laughs> hey, Duke. I got to thinking, sitting here last night, what about them kids? Well, Slim, what about them? We didn't do it, but they can pin a kidnapping rap on us. Not without evidence, Slim. No, but she... Oh, I get it. No evidence, huh? That's right. No kids. What do you think? Yeah. Jake here don't want no evidence either. As soon as we dispose of the man who calls himself the shadow, no one will know. And then Jake here gets rid of the kids. That's right. Yeah, but how about Jake and old Sadie? I think they could uh, disappear and not be missed. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hey, Duke, look. We can see the whole tree now. But I don't see nobody. No, of course not. But he's there. Now watch carefully, Slim. There's no wind. Any limb or branch that moves may be the shadow. Yeah. So when something moves, let him have it. I get it. Hey, but... How will we know when we get him? He'll come down, Slim. <laughs> now you miss, Slim. Take your time. Hey, what's that? I thought I saw a branch move. We're shooting at the shadow, Jake. And when he's unconscious or dead, we can see him all right. And then... <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do so good yourself, Duke. Uh, those dogs are hungry. Yeah. I bet they look nice from up in the tree, waiting for their breakfast. 
How can you shoot him if he can't see him? Shut up, Jake. Now, take your time, Slim. Morning, Duke. He's there. Good morning, Shadow. I hope you slept well. Oh, yeah. And you? Now, watch close. Yeah, yeah. Would it be too much for me to ask, how are the little boys? They're all right, Shadow. So far. That's good. Yeah, but I'll get rid of them. Slim, get around the other side of the tree. I think he's low in the tree, behind the trunk. Okay, Duke. We're taking care of you first, Shadow. You know too much. (laughs) Well, what's funny, Shadow? I'm laughing at you, Duke. Oh, yeah? (laughs) You laugh different when I get my hands on you. Why don't you come up here and try it? I don't have to. You'll come down. You'll have a long wait. Oh, yeah? Can't you say anything but, oh, yeah? You're really quite stupid, Duke. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I'm smart enough to get you out of that tree. Good. I was getting rather bored. Ah, oh, shut up. Hey, Slim. Go back to the house and get an axe. This tree ain't too big to cut down. Very ingenious. Yeah, but the dogs. It ain't safe to leave without Jake. The dogs, they won't touch you. They're mm-hmm. after the shadow. And Jake will keep them here. Sure, sure. I'll keep them here, sure. And hurry back, Slim. Now, scram. Okay, Duke. But don't let them dogs come after me. Jake will keep the dogs here. Okay, watch it. Now, hurry back, Sam. Say, Jake, call the dogs off. They're going after Slim. Yeah, they don't like you. They call it back. Slim, look out. Jake, the dogs are attacking us. Yeah, they're going to eat him. I'll shoot him, Slim. Ah, guess you, you didn't shoot him soon enough, Duke. Well, Jake, your dogs got Slim. I'm afraid you've lost most of them. Yeah. Ma'll be awful mad. There's only Big Tom left. But the Duke will shoot him. No, he won't. His gun's empty. Look at him go up that tree. Yeah. Big Tom didn't get him. Now you're both up in a tree, ain't you? No, Jake. I'm standing right here behind you. Now do what I tell you. Go over to that tree and tie Big Tom to it. So that the Duke can't get down. Why should I? You want to get those kids out of the way, don't you? Duke won't let you. Yeah. He won't, maybe. Yeah, he won't let me, maybe. Hey, I won't tell him what I'm going to do. Jake, call off this dog. Tie him up, do you hear me? Tie him up. Oh, not to my tree, you dope. Take him away. Listen to me. Don't tie him there, you half-wit. Well, Duke... We change places. I'll get you if it's the last thing I do, Shadow. You're going to have plenty to do before we meet again. Jake, come back here. Yeah. You'll I'm have there. plenty of time to think about that. Here are some men that may help you out. Who are they? Uh, my Lord, what happened here? I don't know, Sheriff. See, this is the hunchback, Jake. Hello, Jake. Duke's up in the tree. Duke? Yeah, look out, Sheriff. <laughs> Got him. Reckon that dog won't attack anyone else. You killed him! Now, if our friend will come down out of the tree, I'll be delighted to put a pair of handcuffs onto him. I've been looking for him and his partner for some time. From the looks of things, I won't need to put the cuffs on his partner. Well, Margo, you better go back to the cars. All right. Yes, I think I will. I I only wanted to see if... Yes, I'll go back. All right, men. Let's take him away. Margo. Margo. Oh, oh, Lamont. Lamont, are you all right? Yes, but don't speak my name here. Darling, I was so frightened when I got your wireless message. I, I thought it was the end. So did I. Are the boys all right? Yes, all the boys are safe. They've been taken into town. A deputy sheriff took old Sadie along. Dickie Nelson is in one of the cars up the road waiting. Oh, Lamont, I feel so sorry for that poor old woman. So do I, Margo. She's demented. We must see that she's placed in an institution, not a prison. A place where she can satisfy her mother-love mania with dolls. Instead of other people's children. Go to the car, Margo. I'll meet you there. What are we waiting for, Miss Lane? I want to go home to my mother. Just a minute, Dickie. I'm expecting someone. Who? Oh, here he comes now. Hello, Margo. Hello, Lamont. Who is this young man? This is Dickie Nelson. Dickie Lamont Cranston. Hello, Mr. Cranston. (laughs) Well, Dickie... I hear you had quite an adventure last night. Yes. A kind man came to my room at that terrible house. 
But I couldn't see him. Maybe you dreamt it, Dickie. Supposing we keep it a secret, just between us three. Yes, I think that's a good idea. All right. But it was a swell dream. And here is John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert, with some interesting information for you. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Good evening, friends. The health and comfort of your family during this period of widely varying temperatures depends to a great extent on whether your heating plant delivers steady, even heat when you need it. And the efficiency of your heating plant depends upon the proper use of furnace dampers. Here are some helpful hints on the proper use of these dampers. First, the turn or the smoke pipe damper should never be used for day-to-day control of heat. This damper should always be kept as nearly closed as possible without retarding the free burning of your fire. If you do not have automatic thermostat control of your furnace, the everyday control of heat should be left to your check damper, that flap-like damper located on your chimney pipe and the ash pipe damper. To get more heat through your house, close the check damper and open the ash pit damper. Always remember, when one is closed, the other should be open. If the house is warm enough, close the ash pit and open the check damper. The proper location of these dampers is important. The check damper should be between the chimney and turn damper, the latter being between the check damper and the furnace. If the dampers are in this position, they are properly placed. And if operated in the manner that I have just explained, you should not experience any trouble in maintaining an even temperature in all parts of your home. However, if you do have trouble with your furnace, phone your nearest blue coal dealer and ask him to send a John Barclay serviceman to your home. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. And friends, take Mr. Barclay's tip. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer. Have him send a John Barclay serviceman to your home tomorrow. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. (laughs) As you sow evil, so shall you reap evil. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. (laughs) Next week, same time, same station... Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will again present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen. And be sure to burn Blue Coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort. (laughs) 